back to the Northwoods. Glad to have you as always. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's been a while since I've done a firearms based video on the channel and uh, it's about the middle of March right now and each time this year I find myself cruising the uh, used racks at the local gun store and I've kind of got a soft spot in my heart for anything that's Savage, Stevens, J.C. Higgins, or like Sears Roebuck, stuff like that. Um, things that back in the day were considered the working man's gun. And I just happened to come across one uh, on a rack a week or two ago that uh, I just couldn't leave sitting there. So we're going to take some time, go over it, clean it up, and uh, see if we can put a couple of rounds through it and see if it still has some life left in it. It does look a little bit rough right now, but I think we can still put a shine on it and uh, it'll look good at least sitting in the safe. Um, I'm happy to have it, so let's take a closer look at it and we'll see what we're working with. So this is a Savage or Stevens Savage 820B. Um, it's a 12 gauge, chambered in 2 and 3 quarter inch, um, and I believe this one was manufactured in 1953. Uh, we're going to take a look at the date code here in a second and we'll see how we determine uh, the year that it was manufactured. It's pre-serial number, so you know, obviously there's no serial number on it, so we can't look that up. Um, but overall, it's not really in bad shape. Um, it's filthy, as are most used guns that I pick up, so um, she definitely needs a good cleaning, but under all of this gunk, I think there is a real pretty shotgun, so we're gonna do our best to clean it up. It does have uh, the Savage Super Choke on it too, a poly choke fixed to the end there. Um, I know a lot of people think those pretty ugly, but I don't know, I always thought they kind of looked cool. Um, they almost have like a, a compensator style like look to them. But um, you can see there's a little bit of rust down here on the barrel, but that's just surface rust. Uh, that'll lift right off of there with uh, some Hoppies number nine and some, some fine steel wool. So we're gonna get that all cleaned up. So looking at the heads of the screws and the pins and um, all the hardware on here, you can see that someone's been into it before. Um, it's definitely been taken apart previously. The trigger group is pretty filthy, um, but I think we can Clean that up real good, and I don't know, we might even be able to refinish that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but if we get in here real close, you can see on this leading edge here, it looks like there's actually a crack um, in the metal, and this has lifted up or bent down, whatever you want to say. So we're going to see if we can uh, pound that back in so it's again flush with the receiver. Other than that, it does have some significant wear, but um, you know, it's an old shotgun. They're, <laughs> they were used. Uh, like I said, Stevens, um, it was kind of like one of the working man's brands back in the day. Um, they were relatively affordable, but you knew they were built to last. And I believe if my internet research is correct, this would have retailed back in the day for like $62 and change. And like I said, I picked it up at a local gun store and um, I paid about $125 for it. So like I said, that's really kind of one of my favorite things to do at this point in the year when uh, the weather is changing outside, we're transitioning from winter to spring, um, and there's really just not a whole lot to do outside. It's always fun to head to the local gun store and check out the used racks and see what you can find. So as it sits, the action is super gummy. It's pretty stiff, um, but we should be able to get that cleaned up to the point that it's working um, nice and smooth again. We'll see how it compares to uh, the J.C. Higgins Model 20. Uh, that's one of the smoothest pump action shotguns that I think I've ever put hands on. Um, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, you can close the action on that one and then just pop the release button with your finger down here and it just falls open. It's crazy. I mean that it's such a such a good action on that gun. I think that gun is is highly underrated uh, when it comes to shotguns. But um, we'll have to do a video on that one maybe at a later date. I guess let's uh, get into disassembling this and we'll get it cleaned up and see what we can do with it. So I did want to point out the date code on this shotgun and unfortunately this is as close as I can get to it um, in focus but um, on most Savage or Steven Savage shotguns or I guess firearms in general that don't have serial numbers on them there will be uh, this little circle uh, stamped with some combination of letters and numbers in it and you can typically go online and look up the code and figure out roughly when the shotgun or the firearm in general was made. Um, now the A20B was manufactured from 1949 until 1954 um, and the last letter in the code corresponds to the year that it was made. So A would have been 49, B 50 and so on. So this one is E. So we have A, B, C, D, E. 
So we have 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. So this shotgun was made in about 1953. So before we get into disassembly, I just wanted to mention one more fun fact. Uh, supposedly these are slam fire capable, uh, meaning you can hold the trigger down and work the slide and as fast as you can work the slide, um, it will fire. So um, I have one other shotgun that is supposedly capable of doing that. I've not tested that one. Um, and that one's actually a reproduction of the Winchester uh, 1897. Um, I might do a video on that one in the future, but uh, once we get this thing cleaned up and we go through it, um, we'll try and fire it, um, figure out you know whether or not it's safe to fire, and then we'll probably try out the slam fire function as well. Um, but so as far as what I plan to do with this, it's probably just going to be um, you know a decoration more or less. I mean I will use it. Um, each fall, I'll probably take it out grouse hunting. Um, I'm only planning on putting lead through it. Uh, anything this old, I wouldn't recommend putting steel shot through it. Um, I know a lot of people probably do and it works just fine. Um, it's just not something that um, I guess I'm very comfortable with doing myself, but I'm sure you'll get a lot of uh, differing opinions out there, but I have plenty of new firearms that I can put slugs through and steel shot through, so I figure why risk it with the uh, old collectible stuff. At least it's collectible in my mind. But anyway, uh, that's enough chattering. Let's get to work and see if we can get this thing taken apart and cleaned up. So from the looks of it, this has certainly been taken apart before. Um, you can see that the screw heads and the pins, the pins especially, have been hit with a punch before and the screw heads definitely have had uh, a slotted screwdriver in there. I mean, you can definitely tell that they've been chewed up a little bit. So um, we are not the first people to be into this. And that always makes me wonder you know, were they taking it apart to clean it, or is there potentially some sort of issue? So I should mention that I've not taken one of these apart before, um, but you know, it should be pretty similar to most other shotguns out there, and if there's any surprises or gotchas along the way, we'll work through them together. Alright, so it looks like we just have that last pin to drive out. And ideally, I'd be using a brass punch to do this, but those are all the way out in the shop. So we're just going to work with what we have here. So there's no need to go as crazy as I did taking the screws out right away if you're just trying to drop uh, the trigger group. So uh, if you're looking at this side of the receiver, there's no need to take out this screw. Uh, that just holds in the cartridge stop on the inside here and then same thing on the other side here there's no need to take this screw out right away uh, that just holds in the uh, ejector assembly uh, that can stay in if you're just trying to drop the trigger group but so at this point um, we've got the trigger group out and the next thing we need to do is get the bolts out and how we're going to do that is slide the action all the way to the rear bend in the slide just slightly to disengage it from the bolt and then we'll be able to push the bolt up the rear of the receiver. So at this point the receiver is about as disassembled as I really need it to be uh, to give it a good scrubbing on the inside of there but I don't know how well you guys can see that but it's absolutely filthy. Um, so we're going to use some rim oil and some hoppies and get that all scrubbed out probably just with an old toothbrush or something like that and we'll get that cleaned up as good as we can but let's take a closer look at the trigger group uh, the bolt and the slide real quick. So at this point the slide just separates from the bolt and then we can go ahead and clean that or I guess bolt carrier whatever you want to whatever kind of terminology you want to use um, and then at this point here you can kind of see how the firing pin functions. Now that looks like it moves nice and free but we're still going to clean this up as good as we can because you can see it's absolutely filthy. Uh, and then down here we have the trigger group still attached to the buttstock. Um, you know, when I took this apart, the lifter just kind of fell off, um, but I'll give you a good view of how this kind of goes back together here. All it does is just sort of sits right there um, on that nub, and then you can kind of get a, a good view of how it interacts there with that spring. So we can further separate this from the buttstock. Uh, we'll have to take the pad off, and then uh, probably have to get a ratchet with an extension up in there uh, to unbolt the group from the buttstock, but uh, that's easy enough to do. You know, we probably don't have to do that, um, but just for the sake of being complete, uh, we might as well. So uh, I guess before we start cleaning stuff, let's go ahead and disassemble this the rest of the way. 
So like any other gun, uh, the butt pad is just held on with two screws. Uh, I think these are actually straight blade. I thought they were Phillips at first, but it seems like they are flatheads. Okay, right, there we go. So I think so far that was the most difficult part of the disassembly, but that's done. And it actually looks like the bolt holding the buttstock to the trigger group is a uh, flathead as well. So I'm going to go try to find a screwdriver long enough to reach up in there and we'll come back and take that off. All right, let's see if we can get this undone the rest of the way. Okay, so for whatever reason that was actually fairly difficult to bust loose, but we got it out. So moving on, our buttstock is completely free. And just looking this thing over, it doesn't look that bad. I could go through the effort of sanding it down or stripping it and refinishing it, but I honestly think I'm just going to oil it and leave it as is. Down the line I might change my mind, but you know, all the nicks and scratches and bumps and everything that just adds to the character of it for me. And it's also just a easy way to take the lazy route and say, <laughs> I don't want to deal with having to sand this down and strip it and refinish it. But I mean, seriously, all in all, this is like one of the better looking stocks that I've ever dealt with on an old gun like this. So we're going to leave it as is. So here's a collective view of everything that we've disassembled so far. Um, and to be honest, to get a good, you know, clean the action really well, this is as far as you need to go, in my opinion. Um, I suppose you could further disassemble the trigger group, but I just don't think that's necessary. Um, and then you're having to deal with trying to figure out how to put it back together and everything, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, you can look at a numbrich catalog and kind of figure out how everything uh, goes together. But um, with you know, an aerosol can of um, REM oil, there's really no need to further disassemble it here. Um, so we're just going to go through and give this a good scrub. Um, same thing with the bolt and the slide and everything else. Um, we'll get that cleaned up and then we'll scrub out the inside of the action or receiver. Um, and then we'll kind of go over the outside of the barrel and magazine tube and the receiver and everything and we'll scrub that down with some hoppies and some double aught or probably four aught steel wool um, just to kind of get all the surface rust off of it and then we'll slap it back together and see how it's functioning. Um, you remember how stiff the action was uh, when we worked it originally. Um, that should be much much better after we clean it. So uh, let's go ahead and finish this up. So what I'm going to use to clean this is just Birchwood Casey uh, gun scrubber and as it says on the can this is just a cleaner it's not an oil so after you run this over everything and get everything cleaned up real well you still have to go back and oil it because um, this has no um, lubricating properties to it at all it's just a cleaner but it does a really good job cleaning. So the trigger group cleaned up pretty well. Um, if you remember, in the beginning we took a look at the bottom of it here and there's actually, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a crack right here. Um, and I'm not sure what kind of metal this is, if it's like pot metal or something like that, or if it's actually steel, I don't know. Um, but I think we're going to try and bend that back just a little bit. And we'll probably end up breaking it off, but <laughs> I just want to see what we can do there. All right, so we definitely corrected that a little bit. I think I'm gonna call that good. Everything runs smoothly and functions as it should. Safety off, pull the trigger, fire, so that should all be fine. So the slide cleaned up pretty well. That was another piece that was absolutely filthy. Well, really everything inside here is just absolutely filthy, caked with old grease and oil and make well a mixture of old old gun oil and uh, and dirt really. But um, it's cleaning up, cleaning up well. We got the ejector assembly there, and that moves nice and free. All right, and moving on to the bolt and the lifter. These I want to do something a little bit different with. Uh, we're going to get them cleaned up, and then I think I'm actually going to try and polish the outside of them. All right, so all I'm using for polishing here is a rotary tool with a buffing pad and then some general purpose uh, polishing rouge. So we'll see how this turns out, I guess.
Alright, so really no complaints there. I'm going to run over that with uh, some hoppies and that quad out steel wool real quick and that'll kind of be finished I guess. You can see on the back side what that sort of started out as is that dull finish and now here we can actually sort of see ourselves in it. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So we'll clean that up and then go ahead and do the bolt the same way. That didn't clean up quite as shiny as the lifter did, but um, I'm more than happy with that. It's uh, it's clean and it's functional, and that's all that matters. I mean, there's quite a bit of uh, tension left in the firing pin spring there, and that's functioning just fine. So I'm happy with that. Um, I've heard of people having issues with the firing pins on these. I'm going through quite a few of them, or two or three in a row, I guess. Um, and I think that's all just been. You know, on different forums about discussions about whether uh, you should use steel and slugs and you know like not not necessarily magnum loads because this is only chambered in two and three quarter inch but um, just some of that more uh, intense stuff that's um, kind of meant for modern firearms but um, I think this is going to run just fine if we just stick to uh, lead and I think it's going to be a good gun for uh, upland game hunting grouse woodcock pheasants squirrels stuff like that um, and it'll it'll work just fine. So we're gonna keep moving here. I guess we'll probably move on to the inside of the receiver next and get that cleaned out. So we gave the inside of the receiver a good scrub. That was easy enough to clean just a once over with the toothbrush and some hoppies and that got all the gunk out of there. But so next we're gonna be looking at the surface rust that's on the magazine tube here and then down towards the muzzle uh, as well. And this should actually come off pretty easily. Um, I'm thinking we can just take that quad out steel, steel wool and the uh, hoppies and that's just going to scrub right off of there so let's give that a try. Alright well hopefully you guys can see that as well as I can but that cleaned up pretty darn well. I mean there's still a little bit of pitting there and everything. Um, didn't lift off perfectly but the rust, the surface rust it, itself is gone. Um, it's just sort of the little um, pitting and indents that are left there but um, it certainly did clean up uh, just as good as I thought it was going to. Um, and again the idea is not to make it look brand new but just to get all of the dirt and grime off of it um, and then leave the character that it's developed over the years. So at this point in the game um, I guess we can clean up the buttstock a little bit and then probably try and reassemble it. Um, while we're sitting here I might as well run a boar snake down the barrel and just clean that out and I guess um, I didn't clean the poly choke yet either so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that, clean the barrel out and then we'll go ahead and probably start reassembling it. Alright let's uh, put this back together. First thing I'm gonna do is just pop the cartridge stop back in there. And get that screwed down. And then kind of same thing on the opposite side here with the ejector. Snug down, and then we're going to put the bolt and bolt carrier or slide, whatever you want to call it, back in next. It should go, yes, like that. And this is going to come out the opposite of how it went in. You, know, you just bend the uh, whatever you want to call that bar there it's the piece of the slider action bar I don't know I forget the actual technical name for it but you'll bend that in and then slide the bolt carrier past it till it locks in place and then now that is doing everything that it should be doing and I'm just going to toss a little bit more 
a lubricant in there just for good measure. Can't really ever have enough of it. That's moving, moving nice and smooth now. And then we'll get our trigger group back in and I'm going to put this in before I attach the box butt stock. It's looking good. We'll tap our pin back through. And now if we did this right, we should have a functioning action. And it certainly feels that way. So I think we did a good job there. And man, is that a million times smoother than it was. I think we did a good job. So let's go ahead and get the buttstock reattached. And we did make quite a bit difference there uh, with that broken piece of the trigger group. I don't really want to tap on that anymore. Um, it's flush with itself again so at the crack line so I think we're just going to leave that alone and call it good enough. So I think we'll get the butt stock reattached real quick. I get the butt pad on and then I have some snap caps that I want to try and cycle through this and just see what it's going to do uh, before I feed any live ammo in it. I was having a little bit of an issue with the cartridge stop there. Um, I just had to take it out and then bend it a little bit um, so it was actually stopping the shells from coming out of the magazine. Um, but now it seems to be working all right, so we'll try this one more time. So I would say that's working. I mean, I'm all right with that. Seeing as how these are snap caps, let's go ahead and load one up. Safety off, and... Seem to work all right. Looks like we have a decent strike on the primer. Primer. So yeah, I think we should uh, be good to go. Well, I think we're ready to take it outside, load it up, and see if she's gonna fire. Uh, might as well see if the old girl is still up for doing a little bit of pheasant hunting, or grouse hunting next year. Um, but before we do that, I think it just, it's worth, always worth mentioning, um, whenever you're working with a firearm, or especially one that's 50 or 60 years old like this, um, just use your head, common sense. Um, you know, make sure you understand what you're doing before you do it. I know when I do things like this, I kind of like to just dive right into them, and I get a little bit excited and just start taking stuff apart. But um, if you're new to it, make sure you've consulted with somebody who knows what they're doing, or you have somebody um, who knows what they're doing with you, because they're not toys. Um, as cool as they are and as fun as they are, they're not toys. They're tools and they should be treated as if they are dangerous. Um, I mean, I always remember the four rules of firearm safety. I was always taught Tad K, so that's the way that I remember it. But you treat every firearm as if it were loaded. Always point your muzzle in a safe direction. Be sure of your target and what is beyond and keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. So with that, let's grab some ear protection and a couple of rounds and head outside and see if the old girl is still up to doing the job.